Do you have unused coax cable in your walls? Do you want wired internet in a room that you can currently only get Wi-Fi? Do you want faster file transfers that your Wi-Fi connection just can't give you? Or maybe you just want the most stable connection when working from home. I think I might have a solution for that. Thank you to Comtrend for sponsoring today's video. Do you need a solution for a very unique networking situation? If so, Comtrend is here to help. Comtrend's lineup of networking products can extend high-performance network connectivity anywhere in the home or office. Check out one of their many networking solutions, including G.HN coax to Ethernet and power line adapters, PoE switches, Ethernet power injectors, and extenders. Comtrend's products are designed for people who want to easily expand their connectivity without having to worry about running more cables through their walls. When you choose products from Comtrend, you're selecting a company with 30 years of experience in the industry, and they pride themselves in providing their customers with the most flexible and customizable solutions that fit the most unique needs. Check out us.comtrend.com right away for your next networking purchase. There's a link in the video description below. This is the GCA 7000 Coax to Ethernet Adapter Kit from Comtrend. You may remember seeing my review of these amazing pieces of technology from over a year ago, and I'm happy to say that they are still running as perfectly as they did when they were first installed. If you haven't watched any of the previous videos on the Coax to Ethernet adapters, check them out after you finish this one. I'll leave them right up here. In those videos, I focused on the two things that mattered the most to me at the time. How fast are they, and are they reliable? And after more than a year of everyday use, they still transfer large amounts of data at over 900 megabits per second and are extremely reliable. I have never had any downtime when using them. While the other videos include an in-depth look into quite a few different speed tests to show you how fast they are, today we're digging into the installation and features of the GCA7000 Coax to Ethernet Adapter Kit, and hopefully this can answer if you can use one of these in your home, apartment, or office. Normally, if you have Ethernet cables running through your walls, you'll have a plug like this in your room. That plug connects the room you're in to another location, sometimes a networking box in your basement, crawl space, or even sometimes in a closet. It's an RJ45 port, and behind it is Cat5e, Cat6, or another common Ethernet cable type. So, much like having Ethernet cables running through your walls, coax cable can be just like that. If you have a coax cable jack on your wall, it has to go somewhere. In some cases, like in my home, every coax jack on the wall in a room has a cable connected to it that ends up down in my basement. It doesn't go through any splitters or distribution boxes to get there, it's its own single run of cable between the two places. So for example, let's say this end of this piece of coax is on your wall, and this other end is actually in a completely different part of the house. They're directly connected to each other, and there isn't anything in between. So to go a bit deeper, if you have TV services that work through coax, you'll have one main service line that comes into the home and goes into a main splitter box. In my case, because the coax runs go directly from a wall jack in a room to one single spot in the house, the distribution of signal is in my basement and it moves from that central point out to each room's coax jack. This is how most newer home builders run their coax cable networks. When you have a setup like this, you can choose what coax jacks get that distributed signal. You only need to hook up the lines that will be needing TV service and can leave the other ones completely disconnected. Coax cables that are left disconnected to a main distribution signal box are what are known as dark coax cable. Any dark cables are the ones running through your walls that don't have any signals running through them and unused coax cable is perfect for use as a bridge between one location in your house and another. Other houses, depending on when they were built, may have something more like this. You still have a coax jack on the wall, and the cable connected to it still goes to somewhere else in the house, but 
to get there, it may have to go through splitters that are tucked in between the drywall and splits off in all directions depending on where it needs to go. Similar to the other setup, you'll still have one coax cable coming into the house as a main service signal from the outside, but instead of entering the house and going to one distribution box that has all of the coax cables from each room of the house to one central location, it may connect a two output splitter or sometimes only a coupler that links the outside source to the inside cables, and from there it can get quite complicated. If you only have a single line where the main service comes in, but you have coax jacks in each room, it needs to split somehow. For example, that single line could travel through a hallway in the space between the walls headed toward a living room. But on its way there, it needed to branch off to two bedrooms, and from one of those bedrooms, it was split again to get a signal to a coax jack on a wall in a home office. So you're already seeing it being split two different times, and it's not in a central location, and more than likely, those splitters are hidden somewhere in the walls or ceilings. This can be multiplied many times depending on how many coax jacks you have in the home. It's quite common for some older homes to even have multiple coax jacks in a living room because when the new owners moved in, they didn't like where the original jack was located and didn't want to run coax cable along the baseboards or around door frames to get a cable jack to where they really wanted to place their TV. In these cases, it's almost impossible to have real dark coax unless you know where all of the splitters are located and can make adjustments. Many companies do make cable testers that can tell you if a wall jack is active, but without testing, just because you may not be using that coax jack on the wall, doesn't mean it doesn't have a signal. Coax to ethernet adapters don't work when the coax lines already have signals going through it, so you have to make sure those cables are dark to use them. I will explain how you may be able to use a setup like the one with all the splitters later in the video. So if you have a home with something like this, Keep watching, this kit may still work for you. So now that we have a baseline for what to look for when deciding if you can or can't use a device like this, let's take a look at the adapters, walk through how to install them, and on the way, we'll go through some of the features. And one side note, from my testing, I did not have success with getting any connection between the two adapters when running it through active coax lines that carried my cable TV and internet modem signals. My TV and internet worked fine, but the adapters didn't even see each other. So for any coax and connections I reference in this videos, we need to assume the coax cable I'm talking about is dark and unused at that moment. In the box, you'll get the two coax to ethernet adapters, two ethernet cables, two power adapters, and some documentation. Each of the adapters in the kit are the same. They have an RJ45 networking port, two buttons, and four lights on one side, and two F-type coax jacks and a barrel plug power connector on the other. The RJ45 connector is where you'd attach your network device, like your internet modem, computer, gaming console. I'll get into all of that in a moment when I show you how to install everything. The four lights tell you quite a bit about what's happening inside that little box. The light with the symbol of a vertical line with a circle around it is your power light. If it's lit a solid green, the power is on. If it's not lit, the device is not getting power. If the AC power adapter is connected to the device and the other end is plugged into the wall and you're still not getting any power, try another power outlet or try the other adapter from the kit to determine if you have a faulty wall plug or a faulty AC power adapter. The light directly below the power light is your ethernet status indicator. If the light is a solid green, an ethernet connection has been established with the device that you've plugged into the networking port. If it's green and blinking, it means that there's data being transmitted. If the light is out, the device that you've plugged into the networking port is either turned off, the ethernet cable connecting them is faulty, or there isn't anything plugged in at all. The light to the right of the power light is the connection light. This one is the most important because it tells you about what's happening between the two coax adapters. If it's a solid green, you have a data connection rate of more than 40 megabits per second. A yellow light means your connection is between 5 megabits and 40 megabits. 
and a red light means that the connection rate is less than 5 megabits per second. If the light isn't lit, there is no connection between the two coax to ethernet adapters. The remaining light in the bottom right corner is the security light. If it's a solid green, the adapter has a secure connection and has an AES 128-bit encrypted signal keeping your data secure. If it's blinking, it's in the process of becoming secure, and if it's not lit, the connection is not encrypted. The top button to the left of the power light is your security button. When you've connected everything, powered it up, let it go through its own boot sequence, and it's all working for the first time, you can hold down the security button for two seconds on one unit and the security light will start blinking. You then have about two minutes to get to the other adapter and press its security button for two seconds, and it'll start encrypting the signal between the two. This can take a moment, so just be patient while it does its magic. Once this process is complete the first time, you don't have to do it again, even if your adapter loses power. But if you ever move it to a different location and it starts acting up, you may want to re-secure the two by doing this process again. The other button is the reset button. Hold it down on each of the adapters for 10 seconds and it'll reset everything to factory default. If the adapters won't connect to each other and you've verified the coax wiring should work, resetting the adapters is a great way to start troubleshooting connection issues. On the other side of the device, the AC power adapter plugs into the port marked power. The coax connector marked G.HN is what would connect the adapter to the wall with a coax cable. The TV out connector is only to be used when receiving community access TV or community antenna signals. These signals work on different frequencies that, to my knowledge, do not impact the adapters, but this use case is also probably getting more rare as time goes on. So we've seen what buttons we should press and what all the colorful blinking lights mean, so let's put this all together. I'm going to lay out the devices here as a mini installation. On each side of the screen we have the adapters, and let's imagine this wall plate is attached to a wall and the cable coming from it is a 75 foot run going through the walls down to the basement to the opposite corner of the house. It doesn't matter what adapter you start with, so let's start with this one. On this side is the room. It has your gaming PC in it that you don't want to use Wi-Fi with anymore, but the room doesn't have an ethernet port on the wall but it does have an unused coax jack. And over here is your basement. Your internet modem is down there and gives the whole house its Wi-Fi. Everyone else is fine with the Wi-Fi, but it's a bit too slow for what you need. Your internet modem happens to be set up next to the spot where the coax cables converge into one location from all of the rooms in the house, and one of those is your room's unused cable. After identifying the cable for the room you want to use with the adapters, we hook them up like this. Take a piece of coax and attach one side to the wall and the other to the G.HN port on the adapter. Finger tight is fine, I do find that I like to snug mine up a bit to prevent any loosening over time, and yes, it can happen. With heat and cold fluctuations, metal can expand and contract slowly, so over time I've had coax connectors become loose and cause bad connections. Take an ethernet cable and plug one end into the adapter and the other into the device you'd like to hardwire into your network. Now down to the basement. We've located the coax for the room with the adapter, so we're going to plug that into the G.HN port. In my basement, the cables that come from each of the rooms have the F-type coax connectors already on them, so they were ready to go. This time, the ethernet cable will go from one port on the internet modem or router, let's pretend this cable is coming from my internet modem, and it'll plug into the ethernet port on the adapter. Next, we plug in the power to both of the adapters and wait for them to find each other. This can take a little bit, so just wait until the lights appear to be in their final states. As we can sort of see, sorry for the glare and reflections here, the power light is on, the ethernet light is blinking showing data is being transmitted, the connection light is green confirming we have a 40 or more megabit connection between the adapters through the coax cable, and the security light is off at the moment. Let's make sure we have internet in the room. 
Here I have a hardwired device that's getting its internet from the ethernet cable that's coming from the coax to ethernet adapter, and I've made sure to disable the wireless adapter as well, just to make sure there aren't any possible Wi-Fi connections. Now that I know it's working, it's time to secure my connection. I'm going to press and hold the security button for two seconds, and the security light will start to blink. I now have about two minutes to get to the other adapter and press the security button on that one for two seconds so the two can create an encrypted connection. The security lights have now stopped blinking and are solid. It's telling us our connection is secured. Since this coaxed ethernet adapter has only one port, if I had a gaming PC, a smart TV, and a gaming console that I wanted all hardwired in, I could use a gigabit switch to expand the amount of ports I have to plug things in. Just plug the ethernet cable from the coax to ethernet adapter into the port on the switch, and then I can start plugging in the rest of my stuff. One nice feature about these adapters is that it uses a technology called Forward Error Correction, or FEC. It can error check and correct any issues it finds, which makes streaming video content really nice because it reduces video lag, which can help improve video quality. Another feature that I really like is the ability to connect up to 16 of these in one network. You can't mix and match the Wave 1 and Wave 2 devices like the GCA6000 or the GCA7000, but in this case, I'm going to show you with the GCA7000. Remember when I was talking about the single coax runs that use splitters all over the house? Well, here's how that type of setup in your house could benefit you. Here's room 1, room 2, and your basement. This time we don't have multiple runs of coax down there, only the one. And let's also make some assumptions. The house has an internet modem and it has Wi-Fi, but no TV service, so all of the coax jacks in the house are going to be unused. Also, let's pretend that these pieces of coax are attached to wall plates and the coax is coming from the wall. The one coax run goes from the basement and splits off to room 1 and 2. There can be many more splitters or coax jacks around the house than this, but for this example, we'll stick to the two rooms. In the basement, we have the internet modem plugged into the coax to ethernet adapter like we did before. But this time, instead of a direct run from one adapter to the other, there's now a splitter in between. We also have an adapter in each room. The coax from each of the rooms is connected to each of the adapters. Ethernet cables are plugged into the devices we want to hardwire. Now let's secure them by pressing both buttons for two seconds each. Now to add the second room. We could have probably added them both at the same time, but it's always good to test one out to see if you have everything working before you start making everything more complicated. Now I'm going to power up the second one, and we'll have some adjustments to do. I originally attempted to leave the other two adapters as is and see what Room 2's adapter would do. It did exactly what I thought and didn't find the connection because the other two are secured. I pressed the security button, but the two existing devices wouldn't allow the third to just be added. This is a good thing, since it would defeat the purpose of having a security button if you could just add another one in the mix. I pressed the security button on all three, but the secure connection wouldn't complete. What I found was the best way to add more adapters was to reset them all so they forgot their security settings and refine the connections. Once they all restarted and reconnected, they all showed connected with a green connection status indicator. I tested the internet, and it worked. I pressed the security button on the one sending the signal to the other two, and then followed it up with pressing the security buttons on the other two. Once everything was complete, I tested the internet again, and everything worked exactly how I expected. Hardwired internet on two devices using three of the coax to ethernet adapters. While I know combining these could impact performance, it could be something that needs to be done in some houses. These do have a physical rate of 2000 megabits per second, which is the speed at which the bits are actually sent between the units. And of course, there's other factors that go into why we get the end-to-end -end speeds we do when looking at any of the speed tests, but I've tested all of that, and the GCA7000 is near gigabit speeds. And as you saw, the tablet was getting quite a bit lower speeds 
That's due to using a gigabit ethernet adapter through a USB 2.0 port, so I wasn't surprised that I wasn't hitting 500 or more megabits per second when doing a quick internet speed test. And I know I say this a lot in my videos, but you don't need a permanent 500 megabit connection to a room to stream videos on YouTube, from a streaming service, or to game online but this will definitely give you a stable connection and speeds fast enough to do pretty much everything you want without having to fish ethernet cables through your walls. Thank you again to Comtrend for sponsoring this video. Please visit us.comtrend.com to find the GCA 7000 kit and many other wonderful devices to keep you connected around the house. Also, be sure to check out my other videos on the amazing Comtrend products I've reviewed in the past. If you've made it this far in the video, thank you for taking the time. If you like the types of videos that I make, please like and subscribe. Thank you so much for watching. Have a wonderful day.